Well, I hope you're having a most wonderful day. We all have those days that are not. So it is always nice to squeeze one in whenever one can. Which leads us to ponder how much influence we have on the matter and how much of it is out of our control. But there is also the other part, the part that is under our influence, yet we seem unable to get it under control. And when I feel out of control, I always like to take a moment to close my eyes. When I usually do this, something interesting happens to me. And I wonder if it's the same for you. When you close your eyes, do you get the same image coming to mind as I do? I am not asking for the first one that comes to mind. Sometimes that can be a white fluffy cloud drifting in a nice blue sky. And sometimes it can be an exotic waterfall in some lush set, generating a ton of negative ions that always help us calm down so much. But really, it can be anything. Any image can come to mind when you close your eyes. It varies from person to person. Some people are more visual, some people are more oral, some people are more kinesthetic, and some people just really like cupcakes. And it also varies from situation to situation. Most often, the thing that comes to mind first when we close our eyes is actually something we just looked at before we closed our eyes. So we have established that the first image that comes to mind really is just a wash. Let it clear the mind, so to say, and let it clean off any old residue we no longer have any need for. Now that we have gone through that stage, I am going to ask you about the second image that comes to mind when you close your eyes. Can you not close your eyes too tight? This will only create a yellow-orange glow and not the required image we look for. But also, can you close your eyes not too loose either? If you let only a little daylight come through, it will create the effect of calmness that we are after, but it will not provide us with a good movie screen that we need as a backdrop. So let us find that balance of focus and full-on interplay with allowing, where they work together in perfect harmony. This way you can turn inwards in such a way that your mind's eye gets to take center stage. Quite often, this causes one to relax very deeply. A good way to find out if you are in this deep state is if you notice that your eyes have turned back even if this is not saying that it does come natural to you, it's a fun one to try. Just let your eyes turn upward so they can turn no more. Can you feel the stillness within you? Another good way to notice this deepened state of being is if your eyelids flutter out of themselves. Observing this, in yourself can be tricky though. Whether you went super deep or are just starting to recognize that you are slightly altered, I would like to suggest that these are just signs and not the journey. So let us go down this rabbit hole and let us see what is on the other side. Can you allow yourself to just be? And can you close your eyes 
and let that first image come to mind. And then let it wash away like a wave on the ocean at low tide. Leaving wavy lines on the sand of the beach as it withdraws back to the source. Wait calmly till the second image comes to the surface. Quite often, in my experience, this image can be a car. This can be your own car, a car of somebody in your environment, or even your dream car. And when it comes to mind, it does so really vivid. The shape, the colors, the dashboard, maybe even the sound of the engine or the smell of the interior. The amazing thing that happens here is that if you throw your jacket in the back seat, you get this overwhelming sense of freedom. Like you could just take off and go anywhere. Take a moment and slow down that step as if watching a movie. Feel the texture of that jacket as you throw it in the back of the car. And see it flying through the air as in slow motion. A very, very slow motion of your jet flying into the back of the car. If you feel creative, you can even add some dramatic music to the score. One that has a soulful lady singing Freedom, freedom while your jacket is flying through the air till it lands in the back seat slowly. Well done. You are all set to go on a little journey. You have a tank full of gas and plenty of money to spend. But let us not do so for now. Let us determine where we are first. How about we are somewhere foreign? Being in a foreign country always helps us feel alive. This makes us more keenly aware of our environment and we interact differently with this here environment. Most often, I end up being in France. I'm not sure if this is because of the time I spend there as a child or not. Either way, bienvenue to the French countryside. Now that you've been welcomed, pull out the road map and lay it down on the hood of your car. You will recognize where you are on this map and you will also notice a castle on this map on your car, on this road, in the French countryside. And you feel drawn to this castle for some reason. Your gut tells you you should go visit this castle. And your mind draws the conclusion that there must be something important to experience there. Notice the excitement in your body as you get settled into your car. Your freedom is expressed and experienced in the right way. You are an adventurer on a fantastic quest. But before you get into the car, I would like to open up the opportunity for you to get a little treat. If you look across the street, you will notice the boulangerie. And for those that are unaware of the meaning of this word, look it up in your French dictionary, and you will find that it says bakery. And bakery in France means French baguettes and croissants. So bring some euros across the street and buy whatever you like. Not knowing the language can even be a strong point in this experience. 
just point to what you want and make any other hand gestures that will help you get your point across. The lady that runs the place will look like someone you'd expect to work in a French bakery. And she will have a heart of gold and she will be so delighted to have met you. She'll start up a conversation with you and ignore the fact that you might not speak the same language. If you did understand what she said, this is one of the things she talked about. She mentioned some cousin of hers that you should go meet and have a glass of wine with. While she keeps talking, you take your first bite of one of these delicacies. The sensations in your mouth are simply overwhelming. That's how tasty it is. This here is pure love put into the physical form as baked art. You still listen to her stories and you feel like you're listening to Adi Pia sing. A voice full of melodies that entice images and emotions that come from way deep inside you. It turns out she has the same name as your favorite teacher, which makes you for a moment look back on this connection with this teacher. When you finally make your friendly leave, you're affected by the hard space that she holds, and before you know it, you give her a heartfelt hug. She of course responds by kissing you on both cheeks, according to French custom. You are both saying your farewells to an old friend. Now, can you throw your jacket in the back of the car? This is friends in the summer. You're not going to need that one for a while. When you feel ready, get behind the wheel. You still have a little drive ahead of you and you are enjoying this adventure you are on. If you want to take in the landscape or another bite of these delicacies from the boulangerie, feel free to do so and please take your time. You are on a vacation after all. There is no rush. You have worked hard to be here now it is up to you to fully take it all in. So you decide to take off your shoes and step into the grass. You sit down in the grass and celebrate the French custom of having picnics wherever you are. As your eyes roam the view of the countryside here, your mind runs ahead of you and is going ahead by already visiting the castle. Thinking about the castle makes your skin tinkle in certain places, something kids often experience when something magical is about to happen. Allow yourself the innocence, child full of imagination. Whatever will happen at this castle is significant. You look at the map one more time and set a clear intention that you will find your way. You step in the driver's seat, feel the steering wheel in your hands, turn the key and hear the engine start up. Enjoy the ride and before you know it, you'll be at the castle. You'll get out of the car and you'll walk in to experience something that has never happened to you before. This is what happens. On your car ride over, you get help back. There is a roadblock. The sheep herder is bringing his flock across the road to take them to greener pastures on the other side. He moves slow. He's an old man, but he looks like he has moved at this speed for his entire life. Some people are fortunate like that. 
It's just you, the sheep herder, and his flock on this country road. As half his flock has moved to the other side, he stops and turns your way. He looks directly at you. It seems like he's trying to figure out if he knows you, which would be understandable if you look like a local. But you don't even have French license plates. His face lights up like he does recognize you. And he comes over to the side of the car, slowly, as the sheep keep crossing to the other side. Bonjour, he says as he reaches the car. His name is Vincent, and he was born in March of 1927, just down the road from where you are right now. He starts up a conversation. He could have been more understandable than the lady at the bakery because he speaks a lot slower. But his friend seems ancient. Even a novice can pick that up quickly. In the end, he points to the mountains up ahead and you notice a castle on top of the furthest one. From where you are in the car, that would be the third furthest one. The sheep have all crossed the road. The old man reaches over and pats you on the shoulder. As he smiles at you with such deep, clear eyes, you choke up as your eyes meet. It's the wateriness in his eyes that remind you of something so dear and long forgotten. It makes you all emotional. It makes you want to be part of some indigenous grieving ceremony and take on the role of main crier, which is quite the task to take on. Not only is it expected that you cry the hardest, the others do not even feel obligated to lose a tear till you have fully opened the floodgates yourself. No box of tissues is involved in these ceremonies, by the way. Their motto is, let it be as messy as possible roll around in dirt, tear off your clothes, and scream often, and do it loud. Because it helps you release. You put your hand on his hand, on your shoulder, for his message on your journey. And he has obviously had his journey. You do your best to sound French when you say, Au revoir. You have your hand sticking out the window to wave goodbye. You feel the cool air stroking your hand. You open up all the windows of the car and you feel refreshed. Not just physically, but your entire being. Your lungs fill up as you let go of all the years that have gone by already. Wow, where has the time gone? You find yourself at a drawbridge without knowing how. You drove up a rugged mountain that could have been even more wild if it wasn't for the hairpins keeping it somewhat tame. Images flew by like memories. Winged information, but not in perfect deformation. You were as if in a trance. Maybe you were so observed in yourself, the rest of the world disappeared or you were so out of your body connecting with the universe, your inner robot took over to make sure you were safe. Either way, here you are. You park the car and face the castle. You are not getting out of the car just yet. You lean forward with your arms leaning on the steering wheel as you look out to the castle. For a moment, it feels like you're going back in time. Back into time when there were knights and fair ladies. A king and queen would oversee it all, and a minstrel would be there for light entertainment. Yep, it's tempting to want to stay there. But you pull yourself out of the car, 
and you take the necessary steps to get there. Some of those steps take you across the bridge to enter the castle. It's obvious to you, people are here, but nobody is around. You decide to explore. On the inner plane, you feel that there is nervousness. You take a deep breath, a deep, deep breath, and let go of all the tension. When you explore on the outer room, you see a castle that has withstood the challenges of time well. It is very old, yet still in real good shape. Pretty as a picture, four walls, four towers, and flags blowing everywhere. This place sure is well taken care of. The beautiful gardens and abundant flowers are a clear indication of that. You look towards what looks like the main door. It is the door that has the biggest and most grandest stairs leading up to it. Your instinct tells you, try that one first. While you walk towards the doors, you rub up against some lavender plants. You don't just notice it touching your legs, but also your heart, when the smell connects with your nose. It is interesting to notice how easy it can be for pleasing smells to open doors inside it, especially compared to opening large wooden doors. Even if you can push really hard with all your strength, sometimes it is to no avail. But then you realize you have to let it come to you that way it's almost effortless. As you look inside, you see a large assembly gathered inside. Everyone is looking your way. It's obvious you opening the doors did not go unnoticed. You hold the large and thick French dictionary that you brought from the car in front of your heart. You were tempted to bring a croissant instead, but you are glad you decided to bring the dictionary. The man who is standing in front of this gathering waves you in and points at a space in the first row. People make room for you to come through and you find your way to the front. The speaker nods his head in your direction as you take place by a seat that has your name engraved on it. Before you sit down, your hand takes a moment to trace your name through the engraving. The speaker clears his voice and starts speaking. You quickly sit down. He speaks French like any Frenchman would, but he does it with this universal accent, which makes it easy to understand. He used words that conjured up images that related meanings that gave you understandings that left an imprint that lasted till the day you die. Which would imply we believe in death being final, but we don't. He basically said, there is a way you can pray that leaves you speechless. Yet even the hard of hearing will hear as it engraves the words deep into the clay, being that what Creator used to bring you into shape. So listen carefully, but not with your ears. They are too busy listening to the past. I ask you to listen with your heart. So breathe in the essence of these words, and your heart will soak up this meaning straight out of your lungs and transport it right into your entire being. So hold on. Can you stop thinking what you're thinking? And can you let the images come your way? Because we could all go there right now. Please, I press on your heart to allow yourself to go there then my financial prognosis will be that this allowance will keep paying off for all the years to come. 
And can you also remember when I say you, I mean you. And it so happens that this one goes out to you. Your spirit is so vast, part of you is still connected to one of the cornerstones of the pyramids of Giza. There's even a dinosaur skeleton buried somewhere in Russia that once held your spirit. And when the last ice age hit, you got covered under a thick layer of ice as a ladybug. And you got to just sit there in silent meditation for hundreds of years on end. And part of your spirit is off into the hopefully not too distant future as a homo sentient, elevating both inner and outer reality. So whenever life gets a little too real, Remember that any of the challenges that come your way in your life are really the equivalent of an ant trying to tackle you on your way to the end zone. Yes, if you identify yourself as a frozen ladybug, that ant will get the upper hand. But if you only remember, if you only remember to stop and take the time to remind yourself of the vastness of your being. And while you're at it, you might as well remind yourself of the great quantity and quality of your works here on this planet and beyond. When you do so, you will come to a place where you will feel nothing but compassion and love for every reflection of self that comes your way. Whether this mirror is on the wall, in line at the store, or in a child that comes through your bloodline calling you mama or papa. Whatever the reflection will be, you will feel love. Can you take that all in? Can you open up your arms like you were ready to receive your lover? Have it be your soulmate if you feel so inclined. And have all that you are unique for be recognized by this most passionate person, by the world and any other reality there might be in existence. And all these varying levels of reality will reassure you with such depth and conviction that those traits in you are actually the keys to what will get us to find the missing link between Homo sapiens and Homo sentience. This is true for you, this is true for your best friend, but this is also true for that person in your life that triggers you the most. So take care of one another, especially when it's the one, but more importantly, the other, that person, being, or object that is deprived of love, or just deprived of your love, because that blood vessel pump in your body is made for love. Even when you're deep asleep, the heart of yours is fully activated with the potential to transform all of existence. And when you start waking up, remember that it's not for you to find love. The task at hand is for you to release love. The challenge for you is to no longer stand in the way of your heart and its sole purpose which is to love. And the subject of this kind of love will not be a thing, a situation, or even a person. It will simply be life with everything inside. So, if you ever find yourself in line at the store being late for the next thing, if ever you find yourself needing a break from your child, 
If ever you find yourself looking into a mirror and not finding a thing of beauty, or if you find yourself experiencing all those things in one single moment of time, choose the follow. Crave it, desire it, and embody it. Go after it like there is no tomorrow. Because there is no tomorrow. There's only today. So long for it like a child longs for dessert. It cannot get its mind to focus on anything else till it receives what it wants. The next time you, and remember by you, I mean you. The next time you find yourself in a situation like that, do not come from love as you know. That love has ups and downs and pros and cons. Now, instead, can you look for essence? In fact, can you look for the very core of that essence? All you need to do is see it, watch it, and observe it. Not with love, but with your essence. Because in essence, everything is love. And now you are releasing it without it being contrived, forced, or filled with attachments. Recognize your essence and it will set you free. And then you come back to that realization you had as a frozen ladybug. When for years you felt stuck, stuck under a thick layer of snow that covered a thick layer of ice that covered you, frozen stiff with nowhere to go. To top that all off, no one was there to help. Now that was a cold, cold reality you were in. But then you got it. You really got it. You realize how lucky you were. You had nowhere to be and nothing needed to get done. It gave you the opportunity to just sit and experience. At first you felt nothing but the weight of all that cold mass holding you down. But soon you started to feel connected to this frozen mass of water. So much so, you started to identify with it personally. You came to experience that you were the ladybug and you were the thick layer of ice. It became clear to you that it was not the ice that was holding you down. In fact, it was you that was doing this to yourself. Coming to this deep realizing made you euphoric. It made you ecstatic, and you were filled with joy. But it didn't make the sun come out and melt the snow and ice to set you free. Nope. No such thing happened. Because this freedom was not circumstantial. It did not require an outside reflection to encourage you to stay on track. It did not need road signs or omens needed juicy carrots or gold. All it took was the realization of how much weight you have put on top of yourself and how much discord you created in your life because of it. Now that you remember this, now that you fully remember that to the fullest depth of that realization, you can fully let go of all the roadblocks in your life. Those that you created and those that came with your contract in this lifetime, in past lifetimes, or even in future lifetimes. Wouldn't that be great? But I'm just teasing you. Even if there was such a power that could do that, it would not help you one it. You would not even be half as powerful as you are today if you had never faced a roadblock. It's not the roadblocks we need to get rid of. It's the noise that comes up within us whenever we face a roadblock 
that we can do with that. And without the unnecessary noise, do you know what you get? Challenges, new and improved, now stress-free and clear. These see-through challenges will make you more successful, more popular, and even more sexy. They are easy to accomplish, yet you get stronger and in better and better shape every day. And most of all, conquering these challenges will make you feel good about yourself. Yeah. Order now, and we will include a lifetime supply of self-confidence. But what should we do with that noise? That cocktail of fear, anxiety, self-doubt, and all the other negative chatter you used to tell yourself. I feel the need to check in with you about that. Can you let go of that noise? Can you let go of it like you would if you had a black raven in your hand? You'd simply open your hands and the raven would take off never to come back again. Why not, right? It craves to be free as much as you do. Now you get notified that hereby the paper trail of this part of your contract has been let go of all the way. Poof. Gone. Torn up and burned. Paper shredded and composted. Yep. It has been properly disposed of to say the least. This paperwork has been so well disposed of, it has gone back into time. Far back into time. It has in fact come back as the first papyrus paper that ever was written on in ancient Egypt. And can you guess what was written on this papyrus? That's right, the groundwork designs of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The one that still carries your spirit name on it. And yes, you understand it correctly when you see it does so that you are an integral part of the Great Pyramid of Giza. An energy point so essential to the well-being of this world. Once so well placed and designed, it creates harmony for all on this planet, including you. Now, I would like to ask you to look into a mirror. Not one that is on a wall, but one that is in a doorway. And when you look in this mirror, you will notice you are standing in line. A blood line. Your child is behind you, fully behind you, and your ancestors are trailing the way and pioneering before you. You have prepared yourself for this moment, and you are getting yourself ready for the next time around. One way to do this is by taking care of yourself. Because if you do well, the Great Pyramid will do better. And we just learned that the Great Pyramid is here to take care of you. So this makes it easier for you to take care of yourself. Hence the gift that keeps on giving. Another way to do this is by using this lifetime to deepen your connections. Those from this lifetime and those from others. Perhaps the little pebble that lay next to you under the ice for so long when you were a ladybug has now come back as an uncle who you are close to and who also happens to have a crystal collection. Or your fellow dinosaurs that ran in the same pack and now you all chose to reunite yourselves in your high school team this lifetime. So, but then here you are. You have been on this earth so many times you have touched about every corner of this planet, which is impressive because our planet is round. You connected with about every spirit that has roamed this planet, past and present. To tell you the truth, 
you probably sat with the Buddha, whether it was as a monk, a lay person, or as a leaf on the Bodhi tree. And if you were not there, someone close to you in this lifetime was. And again, you probably had the opportunity to listen to the Christ when he was around. Who knows? You might have been one of the disciples, Mary Magdalena, or a piece of straw in his crib right after he was born. Now tell me, have you been listening to me? Have you really, really been listening to me? If you listen closely to me, your answer would be no. Because there is no you. There is no such a thing as you separate from the rest of the world. You are part of the great pyramid of humanity. A pyramid that gets its greatness from all the beings that stand together as one. One block holding the other up because it itself is supported by yet another block. All things interrelated, we are one. All is one, all is one. All is one, all is one, all is one. And where all is one, one can experience the magic behind this all on a daily basis. Whether it might seem cold out or not. And did I tell you about that last ice age? Well, it is long gone now. The ladybug can take comfort in stretching its wings and take flight. Be bold no matter how little it might seem. It can experience its freedom both inner and outer and soar through the sky, crossing the open meadow, visiting each flower. That ladybug has wings and is not shy to you. Can you see this ladybug right next to that dewdrop in that leaf? Can you see how it takes off? Flying, soaring, free, happy.